Hey everyone, it's Edison here. Uh, this is our Ancient World History Review, so let's get right to it. Let's go back to the very beginning. Mesopotamia is where it all began, in between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers and making up the Fertile Crescent. These were the first people to begin modern day actions, such as domesticating animals, and growing crops. Does Bronze Age or Hammurabi's code ring a bell? Uh, yeah, that was these guys. In Mesopotamia, there were many different empires, such as the Sumer, Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian. They had many different characteristics, but they all started the agricultural revolution and constructed permanent buildings. Now Egypt, probably the most successful ancient peoples since modern times. Great pharaohs such as Khufu, Khafre, and Menkaure built the pyramids to such an extreme level that even today we still don't know how they were built. These guys were so powerful that they convinced the rest of their people that they themselves were directly sent from the gods. Egypt became so successful in their engineering advancements that they became one of the longest and largest living ancient civilizations. They built dams and walls around entire cities and even based their agriculture on the Earth's annual actions. They took a flying leap 4,900 kilometers to the east and were now at one of history's richest and most diverse cultures. India, guarded by the oceans to the south and the Himalayas to the north, is pretty solitary for the most part and left to do its own thing. Here is the birthplace of Hinduism, which was based upon the ancient texts known as the Vedas. They were all about this small thing called the caste system and lived life with the hopes of being reincarnated into a higher caste. Just kidding, it was pretty freaking huge. Up north, Gautama Buddha was chilling under a tree and starving, when after three days and some pretty deep thinking, he found Nirvana. Thus began the non-theistic religion, Buddhism. And it was a way for lower caste members to escape Hinduism. Up and to the right a little ways is China. With their expanding empire and growing success, well, except for maybe all the ladies' poor little footsies, these are one of the most interesting groups of people. Fueled by the flow of ideas coming from the Silk Road, the Chinese were always advancing. I mean, in the year 221 BC, they began building the Great Wall of China. Still, today is one of the great wonders of the world. It was a boundary of stone over 1,800 miles long. The long-term effect of ancient China's thriving success is the fact that they are still one of today's most powerful and thriving cultures. A Chinese philosopher named Confucius created Confucianism, and the Chinese people were very strong believers in the mandate of heaven. 300 soldiers and many great thinkers to the west is Greece. Have more than seven years on your shoulders? Well, if you want to be Sparta material, you better already have some big muscles and be a participator in gruesome warfare. Now, maybe that sounds like your kind of style, but I personally like the sounds of being an Athenian much better. Being an Athenian means being given the right to do as you freely please, share your ideas, and even doing what you can to make society better. The government that you're under right now in the United States is actually based upon the first democracy established by Athens. As different as these guys are though, the city-states of Athens and Sparta did come together to defeat their common enemy, Persia, led by their king Darius. Usually, defeating an entire empire is a good thing, but Athens and Sparta couldn't decide who would now become the next overall ruler, so they entered a civil war and ended up bringing their entire country to an end. Just one peninsula to the left, hop on the aqueducts and take a ride right into the center of Rome. Rome, originally run by a powerful senate, run by the rich patricians, poor plebeians, and two consuls. Eventually, the member of the first triumvirate, known as Caesar, overthrew the Roman Republic. He also began the Roman Empire. He took from the senate and gave to the poor, and he was assassinated as emperor. And so, the empire was destined to fall to a series of crazy rulers. However, Rome did still expand and grew to all of southern Europe and northern Africa, and some pretty awesome buildings and architectural feats tagged along. However, I guess people still just couldn't get it right, and yet another thriving civilization ceased to exist.
Hey, what's that? See that guy over there? No, of course you don't. Because if I were to actually have drawn Muhammad, the founder of the Islamic religion, I'd probably be dead by now. This guy spoke Allah's words to writers who thus produced the Quran. Five pillars were created, being Shahada, praying five times a day, Zakat, Ramadan, or more commonly known as fasting for one month every year, and the Hajj. The Hajj is a religious ceremony required by each submitter to Allah, or Muslim, at least once in their lifetime. It is a pilgrimage that began by Abraham and is when everyone prays at the Kaaba. Islam has a lot of history to it, and some of its beliefs has made it a challenging religion to accept in countries such as our own. You know what isn't challenging to accept, though? The idea that the Mongols are probably, most definitely, some of the coolest people to have ever inhabited this earth. With their swiftness on horseback, nomadic lifestyle, and leadership under Genghis Khan, these guys became dominant in almost all of Asia and grew one of the largest empires known to mankind. Argued today as either one of the greatest and fairest, or worst and tyrannical rulers, Genghis Khan was accepting of everyone and brought his people to great success. They did eventually die off, but not due to so much defeat, rather than just blending in with the surrounding people and slowly dissolving from their used-to-be mobile nation. Hop on your floating chinampa and take a ride two continents west and half one south into uncharted lands where there lies individual groups of civilizations with incredible advancements for their time. Guided by their many gods, the Aztecs, Mayans, and Incas came to achieve great feats. In the 1000s, these guys could build mountainside cities and calendars only 0.006% off of the accuracy of today's. As advanced as these civilizations were though, no one knows how this group of people died off, and they are only left with a few series of theories. Back on the other side of the world, the Mongols have died off, and there is no one left to maintain and protect the Silk Road trading network. It is time for something new, the Indian Ocean Trade Route. Founded by merchants who sought out for gold and riches, they learned the fastest ways to exchange goods, such as ivory, porcelain, and iron between countries. Successful for a long time, this business only came to a stop once even faster methods of trade were developed and city-states grew. We can think of a man named Christopher Columbus, though, who, in an attempt to quicken trade, accidentally found the lands that you are living in and watching this video right now, today.